Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about the sum of degrees theorem, which relates the number of edges to the sum of the degrees. In a previous video, we looked at graph H. We found the degree of each vertex, and we even added all the degrees together. When we found the sum of the degrees, it turned out to be 18. And we talked about the significance of that, but we're going to go a step further. This time, we're going to list each of the edges in the graph and then count the number of edges and see how that relates to the sum of the degrees. When we list all of the edges, we need to be very methodical about it. Since I have letters labeling each of my vertices, I can use the two letters corresponding to the vertices at the ends of each edge to label the edge. And I can go in alphabetical order to ensure that I don't miss any edges, and I don't list any of them twice. This is called a systematic approach to listing. So I'm going to start by listing each of the edges that relates to vertex A. Well, A isn't at the end of any edges. So there actually are no edges that have A as one of the vertices. So let's move on to B. So for B, we have B to C. So I'll list edge B, C. Then I'm going to check D, which is next in alphabetical order after C. B is not connected to D, so there is no edge B, D. So now I'm going to move on to E. Is there an edge between B and E? Yes. So I'm going to list edge B, E. In alphabetical order after E comes F. Is there an edge between B and F? Yes. So we're going to list B, F. After that comes G. Is there an edge between B and G? Yes, there is, so I'm going to list that one. And that's the last vertex in our graph. So now I'm going to start with the C's. The important thing here is not to go backwards in the alphabet. I'm not going to look, for example, for an edge between C and B. There is one, but that was already listed as BC. So we're going to only go forward in the alphabet to make sure we don't repeat any edges. So now I'm going to look after C comes D. Is there a connection between C and D? No. So I'm not going to list CD. After D comes E. Is there a connection between C and E? Yes. So I'm going to list CE. Then I'm going to look for a connection between C and F, but there isn't one. So I won't list CF. And then after F comes G. There is a connection between C and G, so I'm going to list that edge, CG. Now I'm done with all of the potential edges that would have a vertex of C, and now I'm going to look to D. We always have to go forward in the alphabet, so we're going to look at E, which comes after D. Is there a connection between D and E? No, so we're not going to list D, E. Then there's F, but there's also no connection there. And then there's G, which is the only one that we need to list. D does connect to G. All right, after D, we look to E, remembering not to go backwards in the alphabet. After E in the alphabet comes F, so we start with that. There is no connection between E and F, so we're not going to list E, F. Lastly, we have E to G. There is a connection there, so we're done with the E's. Now we move on to F's. From F, we can only go forward in the alphabet, so we're only going to go to G. There is a connection there, so I'm going to list FG. Do I need to list G? No, because there's no letter after G to connect to. So any edges related to G are already listed. Let's count how many edges we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine edges. We have nine edges and we have 18 degrees. Notice that 9 is half as many as 18. In other words, 18 is twice as big as 9. The sum of the degrees was twice the number of edges. Why might that have happened? Is that something that will happen all the time? Well, think about it this way. The sum of the degrees is the total number of connections between an edge and a vertex. Each edge contributes two of these connections. 
So when we add up all the degrees and get the total number of connections, we're going to get twice the number of edges. This is called the sum of degrees theorem. The sum of the degrees is twice the number of edges. This is very useful because if we already know the sum of degrees, we can figure out the edges by multiplying by two. And if we already know the number of edges, we can figure out the sum of the degrees by dividing by two. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. I hope you'll also subscribe to my channel, Ms. Hearn Mathematics, for more math videos and take a look at my next video where we'll practice using the sum of degrees theorem to solve problems.